Welcome back. So like I said, we're going to be talking about the Jager Lakut. Commonly heard, you'll, you'll often hear Jager, Jager, JLC is a very common abbreviation for the term. But, but Jager Lakut is going to be the actual pronunciation of the manufacturer and the brand. And today we're going to be talking about the Master 8 Days Perpetual Calendar. I chose this watch because it has, it has so much going on with it. It's not just a timepiece. It's not just some flashy piece of equipment you get to wear on your wrist. This is a watch that can accurately tell you the day, the time, the day of the month, and the day of the week, as well as the year accurately, including the moon phase, all the way up until the year 2100, only having to be reset once every 122 years. Now, of course, I say that, but it is an eight day watch, so it's got an eight day power reserve. And should you not wind this manual winding watch, then of course the timekeeping function will stop and you will need to adjust it to get it back caught up. But if you manage to wind the watch, you know, once a week or twice a week, every, every couple of days, they say every three or four days is what's recommended by the brand themselves. But if you are consistent about winding the watch, this watch will maintain its timekeeping functions for well over a century. Now, I'd like to dig into some of the features of this watch. Now, like I said, it's got a whole bunch of features, but I kind of want to dig into them almost one at a time. So I'm going to start at the top, literally, and up here near the, uh, the 11 o'clock hour marker and the 1 o'clock hour marker, over on the left-hand side by the 11, you'll notice there's a little gauge. And if you really look closely, this is going to be the 8-day power reserve. So as we wind the watch, the power reserve will slowly rotate clockwise until it gets closer to the little 8 mark. Now, of course, like I said, they recommend doing it every 4 days or half when the power reserve drains down to half supply to help maintain maintain that effective timekeeping precision. And you'll notice that right at the half mark, there's actually a little line indicating when the power reserve has reached that halfway point. Now, if we slide over a little bit past 12, you'll notice there is another gauge very similar in design, but this is going to be our AM PM indicator. And the way that we read this watch, you'll notice it has a little hand that sticks out in two opposing directions. One of them is coated in blue. Now, this is going to be a complication that rotates one rotation per 24 hour cycle. And the reason that one of them is coded, that is going to be the PM indicator, whereas the uncoded hand that sticks out is going to be the AM indicator. And you'll notice that right at the halfway point, there are going to be these two little lines on the beginning and at the end of the gauge. And when either the lighter side or the blue side of the hand crosses into that gauge, that is going to indicate that you are now in either the AM or the PM. So if you're stuck in a cave or if you've been inside for a long time and you're not sure whether it's morning or evening, you can look at your watch and it will tell you. Moving on, we're going to be going down towards the bottom where we have these three larger subdials. Now, I'm going to start kind of at 9 o'clock over here where the moon phase is. This is because on the outer ring of the subdial, you'll notice there are going to be all seven days of the week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, etc. There are going to be two hands inside this complication at the 9 o'clock subdial. The longer hand protrudes and extends all the way up to that outer ring. That is going to be your day indicator. A little bit shorter, there's a smaller hand inside there as well. That's going to be the moon phase. And since we're talking about this subdial, let's go ahead and dig into that moon phase. So now we've seen a lot of watches out there that have a revolving moon phase, very similar to like a date wheel, where as time progresses, the actual moon phase complication changes in a little window that shows you what part of the moon phase you are in. This design is a little bit different. It shows you the entire moon phase going from new moon all the way waxing, waning to a full moon and back to a new moon. And you know where you are in that phase based on where that smaller hand is inside the nine o'clock dial. Now, jumping over to the uh, right hand side of the watch at the three o'clock subdial, this is going to be the date function. So this actually has all 31 dates that go around. Uh, again, it's going to be a smaller ring on the outside of the subdial, but every single ticker, it's either a number or a dot in between, and it's going to have every single month. Now, of course, not all months have 31 days. 
Guess what? You don't have to adjust your watch. This watch knows when it's February and has 28 days. It even knows when it's a leap year, so it knows to add 29 that particular year on that month. So moving on though, that is the only function of the three o'clock subdial. But down at the bottom at the six o'clock subdial, this is where we're gonna have our month function. And it's got six months listed, January, March, May, July, September, and November, with the alternating months just being at the center point in between them. So what at any given time, you can look down and see what day of the, what day, what time it is during the day, what day of the week, what day of the month, of course, what month of the year you're in. And if you look closely in between these two subdials at six and nine, in between the seven and eight hour marker, there's a small little aperture that actually shows you a four digit year. So you don't have to worry about, you know, Y2K and the watch not catching up. Of course, you know, that's in the past, but next time it'll know. So if you can keep this watch around till the year 3000, it'll advance and you don't have to go buy a new watch for the new millennium. Now, of course, none of us will be there, but for all the museums out there that may watch this video in a thousand years, take that one. Um, a couple things I'd like to talk about. This is a very complicated watch, and I would say that the most alluring features of the watch are gonna be the mechanics behind it, but that's not to say that it's not a gorgeous piece. So this is a 40 millimeter watch that comes in stainless steel, but it also has the exhibition case back. And um, I hope you can see it through the deployment clasp. It's also made out of stainless steel, but you'll notice that inside the, the exhibition case back, we've got this sunburst pattern. And if you really look closely, not only are there sunburst patterns that radiate out from a central point on the, in the back of the, the case? But if you look closely, they're actually finished with like a small circular grain that allows when white to hit it properly or just at the right angle, it has this really brilliant finish, just quite captivating. Again, you would need to have the watch not on your wrist to be exploring these elements of the watch, but it's just a stunning creation. They've done a little bit more than just put some fancy lines on the case though. They included some nice little color complements. We've got some nice brass color from, you know, different elements of the, the movement itself, but all of the screws are this blued steel. And of course you've got that magenta color from the jewels. And when you're really looking at the watch, you can just see there's so much going on and it just has a very nice balance, you know, from, a, from an appearance standpoint. You should come check this watch out at SwissWatchExpo.com. Like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.